Let's now generalize the previous video. We were talking about studying a specific Markov chain using matrix powers. Definition. A matrix is said to be stochastic if, first, all of its entries are non-negative, and second, all of its columns add up to one. So from the previous video, this matrix, all of these entries are non-negative, 0.9 plus 0.1 is 1, 0.4 plus 0.6 is 1, 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. So this is a stochastic matrix. Every Markov chain has a stochastic matrix associated with it called its transition matrix. And in the transition matrix, the entry in the ith row, jth column, is the probability of transitioning from state to J to state I. Let's go back to this example. In this example, we have three states and we have the probability of transitioning between states. So let's set up the transition matrix. It's going to be one row for each state and one column for each state. And we're looking at the probabilities of going from a state to a state. The columns represent the from part of that. The rows represent the to part of that. So for example, this entry here. This number should be the probability of transitioning from S to I. And the probability of going from S to I is 0.1. So 0.1. The probability of going from S to S is 0.9. The probability of going from S to R is zero. The probability of going from I to S is zero. From I to I, 0.4 from I to R, 0.6. And similarly for the last column, R to S, R to I, R to R. And this is a stochastic matrix. And you can see why all of the entries are non-negative because all of the entries are probabilities. In fact, this definition wasn't quite right. All of the entries have to be between zero and one. Although 
I guess um, condition two gives me that automatically. If they're all non-negative and they add up to one, then none of them can be greater than one. So I was right the first time. We don't need that as a separate condition. All of the columns add up to one. Well, if we're in S, we have to go somewhere, either S or I or R. So the probability that we go somewhere is one. The probability that we go to S plus the probability that we go to I plus the probability that we go to R. And we've already seen how these transition matrices can be used. Say that we have an initial probability distribution and the probability distribution after K transitions. Then these vectors are related to one another by V sub K equals the transition matrix to the power of K times V sub zero. So let's say in this outbreak, I am initially susceptible. So I'm susceptible with probability one, infected with probability zero, recovered with probability zero. So we have this. as our initial probability distribution. And that's, I think I said that every day um, we have a transition. So every day a transition occurs. And I ask the question after one week, what is the probability that I am still susceptible? So after seven transitions, the probability distribution will be this matrix raised to the seventh power times our initial probability distribution. We'll enter this transition matrix into our calculator as A. And the initial probability vector as B. A to the power of seven times B gives us this probability vector. So the probability that we are still in S is 0 0.478 2969. 
And we didn't explicitly ask, but we can answer the probability that over the course of this week, we got sick and then recovered is 0.4263714. The probability that we are currently sick after one week is 0 0.09533317.